Hey guys, Andy with AMR Servos here. Just wanted to make a video and discuss the suspension geometry further of the Sparco F8 buggy. And just to recap, um, if you watched my previous video, the in-depth video, I mentioned that this buggy has a very high front scrub radius, very similar to the 8X 1.0 2.0 made by TLR. Um, with that said, um, the key to the car is going to be the rear end. And what you want is you want the car to have um, some negative negative offset here um, zero to negative offset that's ideal um, normally um, when this is run on the short hub set short arm setup with the insert um, relocate on the bottom here you could run a negative seven offset and but when you run the long arm setup this offset goes from negative seven to plus two and if you want to run the long arm setup to maximize that, what you want to do is run a wider hex, and I also run a 1mm uh, carbon fiber wheel hex spacer, and I use the ones made by Avid. Avid. And I use this on my Sparkle as well as my TLR to play with the offsets here. And with that combination, the 6.5 uh, 6 hex, um, it's well, just with the 6. hex, 6.5 hex alone, it zeroes out. Um, my offset here and that offset is in line with the lower hinge pin and that is important. Um, so you're going from a, about plus two to zero and then to a negative one with the wheel hex spacer. And this also gives you the maximum rear width of 310 mm. With the front, I've all the, also added in hex. This is a 5.5 mm hex. And this is the difference here. It's about 1.5 mm difference. And you can see the original um, marking here to now the new position of where the center of the wheel is. And I recommend this to um, further increase the front and rear balance of the car. And it also makes it a lot more um, easier to drive. And so these, these tips are optional, you know. And another thing I'd like to discuss that I wasn't able to discuss in my previous video is the quick access diffs. You literally have to remove eight screws. So here are six of them and then you you loosen the two set screws for the sway bar and this rear cover literally just pops right out and you could access the diff right here. Now it's a little bit difficult for me to do it one handed but I'll try to try to do that. But there you go. Now that's quick access. And what's cool about this car is the front and rear diffs are 100% the same. So that's one less part in your um, spares, you know, your spares box for, 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 you know, whenever you're going racing. So that's one less spare to carry. So you just have to just one carry one gearbox set. And the front is held by these four bun head screws and the center will pop out. Let me show you the front diff case so you can see that's exactly the same so you remove these two screws up here loosen the set screws remove the two bomb screws here that um, uh, allow you to remove the bumper and then you have the a block here and then so the a block is held by these two screws here when you pull that a block off normally the tranny cases come come off right with it and again with this split case design Look at the beauty of this. Everything stays intact. The wing mount, the 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 shock tower, the camber links, the shocks, it's it stays untouched. That is quick access. Uh, one of my pet peeves with my TLR is the rear end is definitely not quick access. If they define this as quick access, then I don't know what to tell you because it's not. Um, it's a um, it uses a vertical screw setup with a top and lower case design that's split right here in the middle. So this whole top comes off, and this top, this top case, all this stuff is attached to it. The wing mount, the shock tower, the camber link. So you literally have to loosen the two screws here to remove the wing, and you need to use the ball end to act to, to be able to loosen these top screws here, these big bind head screws. And then you have to remove the shock tower, or not the shock tower, but the, 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 the two screws here for the shocks, and remove the shocks. And 
Then you have to even loosen these two screws here to hold the center brace because the center brace is attached to the top case. So all that's got to be removed. And 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 if you if you want to be even you know more comfortable, you remove the, the the end links. But normally I keep those in place. I'll just loosen the shock. So there's there's a lot that goes into this, and. They, you know, they had the opportunity to to redesign this whole rear end when they made a 2.0, but instead, maybe to save money or time, they just repurposed the 8x um, XT, the, the the truck rear end here, the tranny case, because it had a narrower pivot. Um, so don't expect this to be improved or changed or redesigned anytime soon, because they haven't even come out with the Elite yet. So you know how how long the 1.0. Um, that platform lasted and the Elite platform, it was years. So I don't think this is ever going to be changed anytime soon. So, you know, for me, wrenching on the Sparkle F8 is a lot more friendlier and quicker, you know, especially since I do my own wrenching and I don't have my own mechanic or anything like that. So um, this is a big improvement with the Sparkle F8 compared to my TLR. So from a design perspective, that's a plus to me because when I when I first saw the car, you know, I'm looking at it from a designer's eyes because we make, you know, aftermarket RC accessories as well. And that's what caught my eye was all the little, you know, attention to detail that this the, the Sparkle F8 had. And mark my words, man, with the networking of um, Sparko, especially one of the owners being the owner of Jetco and, and also designer Richard, who is also part of Asian RC and how long he's been in the scene. It's only a matter of time that this car is going to be, be popular. It's going to be popular. You know, mark my words, in a year or two, this car is going to be everywhere. And it's going to be popular because um, not only the men behind it and, and the design, but the fact that they're not a big company like Horizon. Horizon has so many cars, so many things going on, and they can't put all their, you know, eggs in one basket. So, in, in, my, in my opinion, they're kind of stretched thin. And that's a good and bad thing. Uh, and uh, there's nothing wrong with being big, but Spark has an advantage because uh, all they have to do is concentrate on this one car. And they're coming out with an e-buggy, so that's two cars. And on top of that, they are in the heart of um, RC car manufacturing in Taiwan. They, they've lived there for years. They know every, they've been in the scene for years. They know all the factory owners. I mean, it's a phone call. That's why when they wanted to revise the rear end suspension geometry on the Sparko F8 and then revise the upper arm material, it literally took a month. So if there's any other improvements that um, can be done to the car in the future, I believe it's going to be implemented quickly. You know, um, that's a huge, a huge advantage, I believe. So again, um, this this quick uh, diff access in the rear is uh, an awesome feature for me. You know, I think that that a lot of other people are going to find that also um, a, a big deal. And again, um, you have to literally remove eight screws to access the front and rear diff and four in the front. So, all right, that's basically everything I want to discuss. So if you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. You could uh, reach me at um, our, on our Facebook page, uh, AMR Servos. Um, also, you could check out our YouTube channel. Just search AMR Servos, and you could see um, some other videos we've done for, um, discussing the Sparko F8 as well as our servos, man. So anyways, that's it. Have a good weekend, everybody.